It's the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We'll look at the pages for national dailies. As always, we have G.D. Johnson on standby, and he will be helping with the analysis of the top stories on our pages. It's good to have you join us this morning, G.D. Johnson. Good morning, Messi, and good morning, Kofi. Salam alaikum. Alaikum salam. <laughs> I don't know what it's going to say, but it's great to have you join us this morning. Uh, I'd start off with the Nigerian Tribune, and as always, uh, focus would be on the top stories. Now, looking at the banner caption, adulterated fuel, NNPC files claim for damages against suppliers. Quite interesting. Queues will disappear by next week. Kiara is quoted than that. Give up petroleum ministry, PDP tells Buhari, saying... You need to leave it. Federal government wants peaceful resolution with ASU. Strike unfortunate. That's what the Minister of Education is quoted to say. As EFCC OK's 1.71 trillion naira contract for transportation education ministries. You also have on the front page of the Nigerian Tribune, eight killed as gunmen attack cattle market in Abia state. Uh, very sad. You also have uh, underneath attack on northerners in Abia. Enough is enough. Northerners or uh, northern collision once. Correctional service reps to probe utilization of 165 billion naira budgetary provision. That's what you find there. And just before we move away from the Nigerian Tribune, what Emefili told us on rumored presidential ambition, Committee of Friends. It gets very, very funny. And drug trafficking, you have Kerry Bauer confess working directly with the cartel in Brazil and Ethiopia. The NDLAE is quoted on that. Exor exonerates agencies, officials, and promises blind justice for the indictees. That's also uh, on the rider underneath the board caption. One minor, three commuters killed, and two others injured in play two. A motekun arrest truck with 63 northern, uh, northerners and motorcyclists in a motorcycle in Ondo State. Soludo makes OND minimum qualification for political appointees. These are the headlines on the Nigerian Tribune. Interesting. Let's uh, go over to the Guardian uh, with the following stories or headlines on its front page. Oshu Primary, Jagaban House of Commotion. Now, the paper has um, interesting headlines today. Uh, this one seems to be a, a sort of like a, a report on what's been happening so far in the Oshu APC. Oshu Primary, Jagaban House of Commotion. That's a, quite a, an interesting, somewhat sensational headline. Um, there's a special, a special on Abakari what they call the big story um, in The Guardian, Abakari in the eye of the storm. And they call it the big story on page pages four and five. So the paper is devoting two pages to that particular one. It, I'm sure it'll make an interesting read. A uh, very interesting one at the top of, top of that uh, um, picture. Wiki denies traveling with PDP governors to Europe to select presidential candidate. That's the River State Governor having to come out to deny. Story of uh, details of that on page 27 of the Guardian newspaper. At the bottom of the front page, this headline. Rail sector falters as GDP grows by 3.4%. Um, of course, uh, some uh, business and economic analysts you know, saying, yes, indeed, uh, the GDP has grown. In fact, inflation has also dropped slightly, but they're not seeing the impact and the effect, you know, in the in the real terms. But we have more stories coming on the front page of the uh, Guardian. Day Nigerians who had never seen five thousand naira met government by finance minister. Ganduja extends olive branches. Court upturns ruling recognizing Shekarao's APC faction. Um, some some uh, hints in the uh, uh, you know in the olive. Some hints, rather, in the in the public domain or in the corridors of the political uh, sphere, saying Shekaro might be uh, uh, considering a shift to another party. Arawa Group urges APC PDP to back Igbo presidential candidate. That's an interesting one. Arawa Group urges PDP APC to back Igbo presidential candidate. Flutter Wave has been making a wave recently, um, doing big things, and uh, this one says Flutter Wave makes waves with three billion dollar 
acquisition. That's quite interesting and hopefully the government is watching will latch onto such a sector um, to uh, improve the Nigerian economy. Those are stories coming on the front page of The Guardian. Away from The Guardian newspaper, let's look at the leadership. Uh, the, the banner caption says, INEC may shift 2023 polls if President Mohamed Buhari signs electoral bill after Tuesday. And let's not forget that uh, 360 days before the polls, now just shortly after the 2019 elections, uh, INEC had stipulated that the, on the 18th of February 2023 will be the next elections. But they still insisted without um, uh, the electoral bill amended, they will not uh, Go ahead, there will be no timetable. But I constantly would hold on to the words of the uh, Commissioner for Education, Fessa Zakoye, who was on this platform, and he told us that INEC had, you know, all the structures within her ambience, I mean, within her capacity to act whether or not the timetable would come. Uh, and so, but fingers are actually crossed, and let's see how all of these things unfold as we proceed. Um, okay, so you have provisions in new electoral bill requires 360 days before polls. Uh, that's what you have. And IPAC, civil society organization, calls for urgent action. No electoral acts, no election timetable. The commission insists. Insist. No compensation for victims of Ikoyi building collapse. That's what you find. Federal government signed 9.3 million pounds agreement to build 23 solar mini grids. Uh, very interesting. ASU prepares for strike as NLC backs ASU. You also have Northern Governors celebrate Aisha Buhari at 51. Talking about the wife of the president. And Drug Saga, Police Commission suspends Abba Kari's men. Well, he's not been, okay, he's been suspended, but he's not been dismissed. Uh, that's what you find. And APC crisis, Ganduji flows Shakarao at appeal court. Where Tola won't return for second term. Marek Bashola is quoted on all of that. Now, this is some of the headlines on the leadership this morning. And we round off with a look at the stories coming on the front page of the Punch newspaper. Um, there's a picture there. Of course, yesterday, the National Youth Service Corps members, uh, 2021 Batch A Stream 2. You know, now they have batches and streams uh, passed out. And you can see pictures of um, the passing out parade in Lagos, Abuja, and Jos. Um, interesting to know what they're coming to meet in the country after service. Um, let's look at a big headline uh, from the Punch newspaper. Federal government, PDP, clash as economy grows by 3.4%, highest in seven years. Um, it has the following writers. This is the voodoo economics of Buhari. When you talk of economic growth, or economic growth, it must have a direct impact on the lives of the people, PDP. And uh, uh, another one, we have an opposition that doesn't want to hear anything good about the country and this administration, Lai Muhammad. Interesting. More headlines from The Punch. Arabia Shalao Yetola's aide disagree as minister accuses governor of waging war. Writers, minister wanted third term through Oyetola, governor's aide. I told my successor not to destroy my legacies, says ex-governor. All right, uh, another one from The Punch. NNPC shifts dirty fuel importation probe to National Assembly. Page 13 has details. Drug business, PSC, that's the Police Service Commission, orders fleeing ASP's arrest. They got two. Um, they also told the police to um, you know, take action on one. But there's one that is at large. And so they've told the uh, police to tell them when they catch him. Um, so PSC orders fleeing ASP's arrest, suspends carries associates. Um, another one, customers kicks or customers kick over silent hike electricity tariff amid fuel scarcity. Uh, my A strike FG interreligious council meet ASU next week. Um, yesterday, the minister of uh, education said that. Um, He's been looking for the ASU officials and they are nowhere to be found. Um, also, the minister of an ASU called that a childish comment in their response. And then the minister of, uh, for Labor and uh, Employment, Chris Ngege, um, said as far as he was concerned, ASU were not on strike, they were on leave. Because um, going by the agreement they signed with this interreligious advisory council, uh, if they want to go on strike, they have to inform him in writing. And they never informed him in writing. So as far as he's concerned, they're on leave. Um, it's something that he said. I, I, listen, I, I listened to the, the, the minister but, yesterday. Yeah. But um, 
really. Yeah. I, I really let, don't let, know if we take that very yeah. serious. Yeah, let's look at some more headlines. Let's just just by way of information so that uh, our guest analysts will have a, a sort of a ground to to comment on this. Um, we move on to the final few headlines from the Punch newspaper. Cash transfer. Some Nigerians haven't seen five thousand naira before, says minister. Um, Ongu housewife baits starving husband with hot water fleas. A victim dies. Really sad. Uh, budget amendments in sessions based on Nigerians' demands. Reps reply Buhari. Uh, Kwara government to head or Kwara governor to head Oshun APC primary committee. Four friends torture a 28 year old to death over missing phone. A device found on chair and finally fish out Elijah fishermen's killers in Bielsa Reps tell police. Let's quickly welcome J.D. Johnson, um, uh, our guest analyst on uh, After Press this morning. Mr. Johnson, good morning to you. Uh, Dr. Johnson, good morning to you. Good morning. All right. Good morning. A quick morning. one. Morning. Um, this is not a headline, but it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. What are your thoughts on the passing out of this NYSE uh, um, uh, batch, you know, yesterday all over the country? Um, uh, I would like to sh you to share your thoughts with us on what, you know, the prospects are for them. Well, um, yes. well um, we're going by the report which we saw in the Punch newspaper with respect to the economic growth that we have witnessed. We hope that economic growth will translate to to improving standard of living, create opportunities, and um, job opportunities and employment opportunities, and incentivize um, small and medium scale enterprise in the country. So that these graduates that were released yesterday um, from the NYC, from the moderate one year NYC program, will be able to find opportunities that they can tap into. That's just um, my, my thought on that. It's just for us to hope that opportunities will be available for these um, young, vibrant, um, resourceful Nigerians that are just being released into the labor market. That's, that's my take. That's my take on that. I wish them all the best and um, as as they are ushering into the labor force. And I want them to understand the reality that parents sending them stipend, that era for majority of them has come to an end. It's now time for them to fight for themselves. Sounds very threatening. All right, let's... Uh, <laughs> well, that, that's the, the truth. That's the truth, <laughs> you know. Let's check out the leadership newspaper this morning. INEC may shift 2023 polls if President Mohamed Buhari signs the electoral bill after Tuesday. And so we remember 2019, shortly after the elections, INEC had said the elections, the next election would be on the 18th of uh, February 2023. And that may not happen. That's what INEC is saying. Uh, there might be no election timetable if you have delays in all of this. But we'd like to share your thoughts. Uh, what do you think, think where does this leave us? I think I think it was the electoral timetable for, I think about three or four electoral cycle when they released that timetable last year, and pending the amendment of the electoral, electoral act. And then um, we have the National Assembly waiting to, to, to the last minute like they did in 2019, before the electoral act was amended and it was sent to the president, and all manners of analysts, stakeholders gave flimsy excuse, telling it was too late for the president to sign the act into to sign the bill into into an act of the parliament. Now we are faced with the same scenario again. Now, when you commit the same infraction twice, it's no longer a mistake; it's a deliberate attempt. I'm not too sure whether there are people in the presidency or those that are advising the presidency that are not interested in us having a free and fair election, in us having a template that will guide our election. Because what does it cost the president to sign the electoral act, to sign the electoral bill into an act as amended? Because the party is... Well, we seem to be having... A the Senate president is, powers of rep, is from APC. APC controls both houses the Senate and the Rep. Now, if with overwhelming majority, if majority of the members of your party could pass a B, it's instructive on the president to sign it into an act. Now, by the provisions of that B, are we putting in place a system that will make us not to have election in 2023? And it, it doesn't speak well for the legacy of this president. And this is a president that came into office promising to reform the electoral the electoral process, because he has suffered 
quote unquote electoral injustice when it contested in 2003, 2007, and 2011. And we thought with him having the opportunity to ascend to the throne of the presidency in 2015, he will be able to right the wrongs. But in 2019, the president failed in doing that. I hope he will not fail in doing this in 2023. However, if that is not done, and if that bill is signed after Tuesday, that means that the election will be shifted based on the provisions of the electoral, electoral bill before the president. Uh, you, have con you have mentioned the fact that you have the APC dominating and uh, being that uh, the APC had promised via the, um, the leadership of President Muhammad Buhari to ensure that we have electoral reform. But don't you think that politics is taking place over governance? Because if you talk about having... Uh, you know, an electoral reforms that would help strengthen our democracy and the fact that these persons, the governors, the lawmakers, might not be in sync with it, it doesn't represent their interests. And so politics is what's actually going on right now with the electoral bill. It's not about representing their interests. It shows that DPC does not have a head, does not have a direction, does not have a focus. Because what is a political party? A political party is a group of people coming together sharing the same ideology, the same principle, the same value, forming a party, contesting an election in order to win and control um, government. Now, if people should come together and they don't have similar interests, why do they run under the same platform? That's what I'm saying. The National Assembly is controlled by the APC. The presidency is controlled by the APC. Most of the governors in various states of Nigeria are controlled by the APC, most of the state as well as them, they are controlled by the APC. In actual sense, if we want to have an holistic reform or restructuring of the Nigerian political landscape, I think there is no party that, that has the opportunity that APC has in the, last, in the last 20 years. But what have we seen? We have seen where the governor is going this way, the presidency will be going this way, and then the National Assembly will be going this way. We are seeing people not being able to coordinate themselves even a party that is not that has not been able to put its own house in order, a party that does not have a chairman that runs with the Katika with the, with the Katika committee, is that a party that will provide leverage for us to run to to, to, to run to run an election and, and 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 for us to have a peaceful transition when it comes to uh, elections in Nigeria? As far as I'm concerned, it's it's just the party not putting its house in order, and as a result of that, we have this chaos. Because there's chaos even within the party. Which is, you look at one of the reports in the newspaper. Now, in, in Kanu State, in Kanu State, there is an ongoing contention between Shekarao, a former governor of Kanu State, and the sitting governor of Kanu State, Ganduji, over who controls APC. Now, you come to Oshun State. In Oshun State, they are having primaries this weekend for... They are for the for the for the black bar for the Oshun APC for the Oshun election. Now you are seeing the former governor who happens to be the minister of interior contesting with his former chief of staff, his successor, who happens to be his chief of staff for eight years, contesting and saying that oh there's no return. So that is the party that Nigerian entrusted their 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 faith in. And if Someone cannot control his household, cannot maintain his household, and you are giving that person the responsibility to maintain the community for you. And that's the reason why we are seeing what we are witnessing in Nigeria today. Sure, a story headline that is um, of uh, int very uh, close interest to you, which happens to be uh, the ASU strike. And um, of course, the punch is reporting that the federal government, the Interreligious uh, Council, headed by the uh, Sultan of Soko Sakoto, Saad Abubakar, and uh, the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, will meet with ASU next week. And we heard us talk about uh, what the ministers have been saying. Your thoughts on this? Uh, the Interreligious Committee, why are they meeting? Most of most of these intelligence communities are the pro counselors of these universities. They are the pro counselors of the universities. Traditional rulers are made the pro counselors of universities across the Federation. So, the Sultan of Shokudu, I'm sure, is pro counselor of one of the universities in Nigeria, one of the um, premier universities we have in, in Nigeria. Why do you have to? Someone said, if you don't want to get anything done, set up a committee. If you want to waste people's time, call for a meeting. 
Why do we have to keep meeting and meeting and meeting? Still, but but, but they, they're, they're meeting serving as a, a dialogue team. You know, they just came up themselves. Khan uh, and, uh, and uh, the the Muslim community to just see how they can they can impress on the president. You know, serving as a mediating body. They they visited the president and they said, "Oh, that was I think two weeks ago." He said, "Oh, he's ready." And um, they they are going to you know listen to Asu and all that before this this strike. Kofi, you see the solution to the problem of the universities in Nigeria is for government to grant them full autonomy. Government should just grant the university full autonomy. Now, there, there are two things that are involved. One, um, um, the university system does not want government control, but the university system wants government funding. You see? The university system does not want government control. The university system wants government funding. I think for us moving forward in this nation, is for us to grant autonomy to the university system for them to run themselves and for them to generate revenue themselves. I don't see, I, I've argued this because this strike or no strike, incessant strike, I was a victim of a strike. I lost 18 months at the university as a result of ASO strike. Majority of those that are in ASO today in the university system are, are, are my colleagues while we're in the university system. And so those in leadership of ASO today were well, yesterday complaining about ASO strike. And they are also um, being part and parcel of what they complain about. For us to solve this ASU problem, my take is very, very simple. We need to take government control out of the university system and allow what government should just do is monitoring, monitoring and supervision, and allow the university system to run on its own like it's done. Did you hear of ASU strike in Ghana? Have you heard of ASU strike in Ghana? There, Have there's you heard of ASU there's strike one in there's India? one currently going on in Ghana as we speak. Just just started um, last week or so. Okay, great, yeah. wonderful, yes. wonderful. Where we have we have robbed on but, that, but that's but that's, but that's the first since nineteen um, ninety something, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so we share similar we share similar attributes as we share historical. Yeah. Historical the, the only difference is that that's the first since the nineties. So. <laughs> but, yeah. so. As far as I am concerned, what we need to do is to decentralize the university system. One, you cannot. Pay a lecturer in Lagos the same thing you pay a lecturer in Karan or Mada. Let each university system develop on its own. Grant them autonomy. Let the university system themselves raise funds. Let them generate funds and let them have control over their own funding. That itself, if you don't create competition among the university system, if you still centralize everything, we'll be having this problem. We'll be having this problem of also not wanting, wanting government to invest in education and not wanting government to control the educational sector. As soon as genuine, genuine grouse against government with respect to government funding. But my take on this, for us to end this incessant strike that we have witnessed in the last in the last few years, we have witnessed 22 ASU strike. I think since 1999 to date, we have witnessed 22 ASU strike. And is that the way, is that a pathway for us to go? I don't think so. Uh, I mean, think Mr. Johnson, just the last one on this, you know, uh, I mean, there has been, there have been some uh, uh, um, uh, information shared online. I saw yesterday, saw the salary structure of the average um, uh, uh, um, lecturer. You have um, uh, the, the, le the senior lecturer one, lecturer two, you know, uh, associate professor and all that. And I saw professors earning about 300 and something thousand naira. You know, senior lecturer. What is the salary? What is the salary structure? What's your salary structure? I'm yeah. asking you, what is the salary structure of every other person in the society? It's, it's just that the value of our, it's just that our economy has been destroyed. It's just that the value of Naira has been destroyed. Just imagine if 10 Naira goes for a dollar. If 10 Naira should go for a dollar. If the exchange rate is 10 Naira to a dollar. Now you're having 300 it is just the collapse. What is affecting university lecturers is affecting everybody in the Nigerian society. So they are not special bread that is exempted from the reality of how bad our economy is, of how bad our currency is. Now, that is 300,000 units of our currency. Just imagine if a lecturer should collect 200,000 units of the Nigerian, of, of the American dollar, or 200,000 units of the Ghanaian city is is the collapse of our economy. What is affecting the university lecturers is affecting everybody. And so, what we should be looking at is how to improve our economy hmm. beyond the salary. I agree with you. The salary is even if you give the 
if you give a professor one million naira, what can one million naira afford in Nigeria of today? I'm doing it to you. The, okay. The, the, the strikes are, are, are like you said, um, 15 strikes between 1999 and 2020. So if you want to add the one of uh, last year and this year, that should be about, uh, um, let's say, 16 strikes. Mm. Out of 23 years. Yeah. In 23 years, 16 strikes. And then we are still making dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. 16, 16 strikes. Let's assume that those strikes were just for two months. That's 32 months. And there are some that are for six months. Kofi, it's what is affecting the university lecturer is affecting everybody's society. That's just the reality. However, there's a need for government. Government want to solve this problem. Take your hands of the university system and let them run on on their home. The university system cannot come up with a system to generate funds and sustain itself. Then what are they teaching their students in the university? If the faculty of business administration of a university cannot come up with a business template that will generate revenue for that. If the faculty of engineering of a university cannot compete and bid for contract and use its own student as as part of the crew to run the job, then what is the essence? We should be able to merge training with practice. So we shouldn't be looking for engineers abroad. When we have local engineers here in Nigeria, faculty of engineering, faculty of across 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 university system you have you have you have individual running hospitals on their own they leave the teaching hospital then you have this teaching hospital of the university system still waiting for government funding if you establish your own private hospital will you be expecting government funding my brother there's a need for us to have a rethink on how to run the system this era of depending on government and government on government funding should should be jettisoned and we should allow the system to run on its own that's my take my take might be radical, my take might be, might be out of this world, but that's my take in solving this problem. Because right. critical situation require critical solution. We need to think out of the box to solve this particular problem. You know, in other words, G.D. Johnson, you, you probably might just be aligning with those who are calling for the restructuring of the polity and allow for resource control. Exactly, that's what it will mean. exactly, exactly, exactly. That's that's just it. The professor, they should be based. It should be based on cooperative advantage and competition among the states. I can leave Unilab to go, and professor should be signed based on contract. You sign, you sign a contract as nobody is employed. Nobody is employed forever in the United States of America as a professor. It's a chair. You seek that those appointment. We need we need to bring in best practices. If we are calling for for best practices globally, we should have it in a in a hybrid tower where we generate the manpower to develop the economy. That's my take. All right. That's my take G on. G.D. Johnson, on, 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 on. we need to move away from that. Uh, maybe we just have a minute or two. Uh, let's quickly share your thoughts on this one. It's on the Nigerian Tribune. And it says, the carry gate. Please commission suspend two indicted officers. Underneath, the uh, directs the IGP to suspend two others. However, uh, there's been the confirmation that he's been suspended, but he's not been dismissed or demoted. Uh, your thoughts, quickly, now, maybe in a minute. Now, how do you, yeah, that's, that might take, how do you suspend somebody twice? Uh, no, this, suspend? this suspension now, is this suspension is to uh, other officers who have been indicted, not him. Because he's suspended, well, however, that's what the police. Now, how can said. someone, based on, how can someone that is on, on suspension still be engaged in operation? That is the question you need to ask yourself. Someone that is on suspension, based on the footage and based on the recent on the recent allegation and the infractions leveled against him, this thing happened on January twenty sixth of twenty twenty two, and he has been suspended over the Osh puppy case, and there is a pending. It's over whether it should be extradited to America or not. And I recall that it was an interview granted by the Attorney General um, earlier this year where he said that there's very likely that Kiari will be extradited. Somebody committed the first infraction, committed the second infraction, is going on suspension. How many people do you think has the opportunity, or how many people do you think have the opportunity that Kiari is enjoying? That you commit infraction one, two, and you still be on suspension without you being summarily dismissed. Now bringing the nation still is still is still an allegation, but there are there are evidence to back. First and foremost, there are people. There are there are enough. There are enough. The code of conduct of the Nigerian police. I'm sure 
is explicit about how these issues are dealt with. Some will have been summarily dismissed from the police force. Not to talk of pending investigation. Well, that's... But, but what do I know? I, I don't know how the police operate with respect, with respect to this. But I don't think that somebody can commit... Inf the, the kind of allegation that was leveled against him with respect to money laundering and the rest of it in the first one. And the second one is on drug. Good All right. Uh, thank you so much, G.D. Johnson. That's uh, the size of it. We do appreciate your thoughts. I mean, it's always a great time to listen to you share your thoughts on all of these issues. We appreciate you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful Friday. All right. Thank you so much. And next is uh, we'll tell you what happened today in history. And when we return, it would be heading straight to our first major conversation right here. It promises to be an amazing time. Please stay tuned.